What's going on, y'all? So, last weekend was Sweetwater Gear Fest, uh, which is their annual gear expo. Uh, it was the fourth consecutive year that I went, and uh, for the third consecutive year, I left with some API gear. Um, I want to give you a recap of what I saw and uh, some things that I got a demo on. So, starting off, as soon as I walked in, I saw the SoftTube Console 1, uh, which shocked me because it's not out yet. Uh, but I got a quick demo of it and, um, you know, nothing more than what we've already seen in the YouTube video, but being actually able to see it and touch it, uh, I say upped my opinion on it. Uh, the thing's built like a tank. It's, it's built of, uh, metal. Uh, the knobs feel really good. Nothing feels cheap on it. And it, it feels like a really nice piece of hardware. Uh, and you know, the more I think about what this product is, I feel like it has a chance to be a game changer. Uh, the control services out now, you know, pretty much give you, um, you know, fader, pan, solo, and mute. Uh, this gives you everything that a that an analog console channel strip wheel plus a few things more. Uh, you got your typical uh, dynamic section EQ. Um, you also got a gate, uh, transient shaper. You've got drive, as well as your normal input output um solo mute pan uh, you know the more i think about it uh, the more i realize that i really hate mixing with a mouse so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna really check out this console one keep an eye on it um he told me that they're planning to launch it at 7.99 which is a fair price to me but um i really think that with it giving you control over the plug-in parameters um as far as me when i'm mixing I would say that I spend more time messing with plug-in parameters with the mouse than I do moving faders and pans, which you get on a normal, um, which, which you would get on a normal control surface. So I think this paired with my uh, fader port in Studio One uh, would be really nice and uh, really help me get away from mixing with the mouse. So here's the uh, API booth, and uh, I picked up a JDK V12. Uh, which is the second 500 series module you see in the rack here in the 500V. Uh, normally when I go to GearFest, there's a list of things that I want and I kind of got to make a choice uh, while I'm there uh, over the weekend of what I'm going to leave with. Uh, this year, I pretty much knew that I was going to get the um, that I was going to get the V12. Um, the GearFest price for it was $549, which is down $50. It's normally $599. And um, I was hoping to get like at least $25 off on it. So when I saw that it was 549, that even more so uh helped me make my decision. As well as when I got to actually touch it and I realized that the knobs were detented, uh that sealed it. Uh if you don't know about the V12, it's the it's the 500 series version of the rack version compressor, the R22 uh that JDK makes. Uh so and the rack version is not detented. So I was really surprised to feel the detented knobs on the uh on the v12 i don't like the the metering on the r22 i prefer led metering uh so when i saw that this had led metering uh, that's another thing that sold me on it uh unfortunately sweetwater's out of stock on it and i gotta wait for it to ship but uh once i once i get it and um you know get to using it on a few mixes you know i'll let y'all know my thoughts on it um uh, other news as far as api uh Mark from API told me that they got some new products coming, so I'm really interested to see um, what that's going to be. Uh, you know, of course, you can't tell me what it is, but of course, there'll be some rack mount or 500 series gear. Uh, we'll see. But um, yeah, with new gear coming from API. I'd, I'd say look for that next year. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they got. So this is the mic tech booth, and um, I was, it was great to catch up with Mike. I uh, haven't seen him in a while. But he's got a couple new products, and uh, I'm really excited about them. Um, as you, you know, may know, the first mic you see there is the CV4, which is their flagship uh, tube microphone. The second mic, uh, the gray one, uh, which is really slick to me, I really like it. Um, it is a new tube mic that Mike Tech is is coming out with. Um, it's basically, as, as far as feature-wise, it's the same as the CV4. Um, it has a different tube. And it has a smaller transformer. Uh, it has a transformer from the C7. 
Um, other than that, um, as far as pickup patterns and everything else from the CV4, it's the same. Uh, it's, it's really a, um, a different version of the CV4, and it's going to, uh, he said it's going to be $9.99, uh, which is, again, another really good price for a two microphone, especially of mic tech quality. Uh, the third mic there is the C7, and the fourth mic is a C7 uh, only in cardioid. So everything to the C7 is identical, just it only has a cardioid pickup pattern. And um, that the the last mic there, uh, the fourth one, it's going to retail for $5.99, uh, which is really crazy because uh, you can get a mic tech mic for $5.99. Um, that's the same as the C7, just in cardioid. Um, if I haven't bought a C7 by now, I'd probably pick that one up. And I expect that one to be uh, really popular uh, once it releases. Also, let me not forget, uh, if you can see the pre, uh, they got a two-channel pre that they've been working on for a few years now, and it's finally out and starts shipping. Uh, he told me that uh, Kelly Clarkson is using that pre as well as the CV4 on her album that she's working on now. So, Mog Audio, I uh, finally got to hear the famous air band. And uh, I got to say, these EQs sound really good. Uh, they're really unique and, and different than any other EQ, not because of the airband, but because uh, it felt like uh, when I was boosting the airband, um, I feel like I was boosting everything else um, in the mix besides the, the air band. Um, they had a, um, you know, they had a track uh, running through it that you could, um, that you could EQ. And uh, yeah, I really like the sound of these. Uh, also, if you go to Sweetwater's YouTube channel, you'll see uh, Cliff Mogg introducing the EQ2, uh, which is um, very similar to the EQ4, except for it's uh, two-band EQ instead of four. Um, and it's got a 15K, um, it's got a 15K shelf uh, up in the air band uh, where the pre-Q4 and the EQ4 doesn't. But uh, yeah, I was really... Uh, I was really excited to hear this, uh, finally. I've been really wondering what they sound like. It's really very clean EQ, uh, but the uh, that air band, the lift on the top end sounds really good. Uh, but like I said, it also boosts, or uh, felt like it was boosting everything else in there. So uh, just something to, I guess, to keep in mind uh, when using them. But uh, you know, I've heard of a lot of engineers that, um, that use these and really love them. And uh, after being able to demo them, uh, I see why they love them. Uh, curious to see what the price will be on the EQ2. Uh, there's not really much information out there besides the YouTube video right now. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, what they'll charge for that uh, once it starts shipping. So this is the Crane Song Falcon uh, designed by Dave Hill. Uh, I was really excited to finally hear this. Uh, it is a tube compressor. Um, I kind of look at it as, um, what they're explaining it as the... No, it's got two different um, two different compression uh, tones or colors. Uh, you've got the the color knob and the other uh, says 100, I think. But uh, it's basically one is clean and one is colored. The clean one, um, you know, they describe more of a um, kind of a Summit TLA 100 sound. Uh, the colored more like a LA2A. Uh, what I love about Dave Hill and his gear is that uh, you can hear uh you can hear a change in tone and compression and really anything when you turn a knob uh he gave me and d lyles a demo of the uh of the titan compressor and uh i mean each knob he turned you could hear a change uh with the falcon the same thing uh it actually was the same demo material that he used on the titan last year but uh again this is a very good compressor sounds really good uh really smooth and um, you know, with the control over attack and release, you can you can do a lot with it, especially with the two tones. Two of the the colored uh, side sounded a little more darker to me, as I would expect. Uh, it is a it is pricey. I think they're twelve fifty each, uh, so it is a lot more uh, than a I say a typical compressor in the five hundred series. But uh, when you're dealing with Dave Hill, that that price is worth it. All right, so this is the uh, new Elysia 
uh, stereo EQ and the Cush Audio Electra. I uh, really went over to the booth to see the Cush Audio Electra uh, and really ended up being more interested in the Allegiant Stereo EQ. Uh, couldn't really hear the uh, Electra because it's it's mono and was hooked up to uh, to stereo speakers, but uh, I did get a demo of the Allegiant Stereo EQ, and um, yeah, that EQ sounds crazy good. Uh, Allegiant makes really cool gear, and they've been coming out with a lot of stuff uh, recently. Uh, the, the Envelope came out not too long ago and then of course they've got the expressor and now the stereo eq I, I sure it won't be long before this comes in a rack version um you know normally they do 500 series stuff first and then bring along the rack version but yeah this eq sounds really good uh the filters on it you can get uh pretty crazy with as well but uh anybody who's looking for a stereo eq in the 500 series i'd highly recommend uh you check this one out it's i said brand new from alicia and it's uh i think it's i don't know if it's 899 or 999 i, I think it's under a thousand uh but yeah really really worth uh checking out and the uh the mix off that uh fab did uh with another mix engineer i forget his name uh was also really great where they both did uh they both mixed the same song uh in 10 minute increments going back and forth um uh, Fab was using analog summing, and uh, John was using uh, strictly in the box workflow. Um, uh, Fab did a trick, not really a trick, but uh, he did something in Pro Tools that I did not know that you can do that I've been wishing DAWs could do. Uh, I did a YouTube search and didn't see a video on it, so uh, I'll do a video on that uh, next week or in a few weeks uh, showing that off. Uh, also, Chris Lord Algae was there, and uh, I actually missed his presentation because I thought it started at uh, 3.30, and it actually started at 2.30. I showed up with uh, pretty much 10 minutes left, and um, he was on stage showing off his uh, Waves plug-in, but um, yeah, I basically missed that. But yeah, if you can, uh, I definitely recommend checking out GearFest. It's free, um, so all you really have to do is pay for a hotel and uh, transportation. Uh, but it's a, a great way to meet with the people that make the gear, the manufacturers, um, and ask them questions. You get to touch the gear. Uh, speaking of asking questions, the Focusrite 18i20, uh, since Focusrite never tweeted me back, I was able to ask the rep there um, if the 18i20 could work in standalone mode. And uh, he let me know that there is a firmware uh, a firmware update coming uh, within the next few months that will allow standalone mode to work with that, uh, which is really cool since that's a, a interface with uh, with eight pre's. But uh, yeah, we got uh, Summer Nam is coming up in a few weeks. I may do one of these videos for Summer Nam, just depend on what's all going on. Uh, usually, Summer Nam is really I'd say seventy five percent guitars and twenty five percent recording, so it's not. Uh, too much there that I'm interested in really since I'm not into guitars but we'll see what happens all right uh, catch y'all next time